Praise the Lord and good morning, everybody. Come on, let's hear it. Let's pray. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad thereof. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. Let's hear those horns this morning. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. We thank and praise God for this wonderful day of worship, this 19th day of the sixth month of the 22nd year of the third decade of this century and third millennium. All Calvary family and friends day. Father's Day, let's hear it for the fathers. Come on, come on. We thank God for Juneteenth. Let's hear it for Juneteenth today. Our day of emancipation and liberation in this land. We gather to worship God in spirit and in our call to worship will be led by Sister Barbara Hackett. Following her is our psalmist, Cheryl Shante, who will offer the offering, the opening song of praise. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His is to be feared above all gods. Amen. Hallelujah, we shall. 
Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Thank you. 
6th chapter of Isaiah, the model of true worship is revealed. There are three basic responses required of man. We have to acknowledge God as sovereign. We have to see ourselves as sinners. We have to accept the saving grace of God. And we must answer God's call to serve. And I heard the word from the prophet saying, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord come high and lift it up. And his train filled the temple. And hovering about him were six winged seraphims. With two wings, they covered their feet. With two wings, they covered their eyes. And with two wings, they did fly. And Isaiah said that his spirit shook the foundation of the earth. So tonight, I challenge you to worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Oh, come, let us worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Worship him. Scripture lesson this morning comes from Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of God's Word. Your version may read a bit differently, but we are depending on the Holy Spirit of God to help us arrive at the same point of understanding in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 7, beginning at verse 1 concluding at verse 10. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly and who was ill and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly saying, he is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people. And it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. 
For I am a man set under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you on this great and glorious day for your wonder-working, performative power through your word. The centurion said, just speak the word. Your word saves sinners, reclaims backsliders, encourages believers. Send your word fully and freely today. Touch, heal, deliver. Fill us so full of your love that it spills into our laps and then into the lives of others. Make the ground fallow for salvation today. May someone come and ask, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Do it for your glory. And we praise you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Evangelist Shante will now come and prepare our hearts for today's good news. Put your hands together, honk your horns, and give God glory. Bye. 
walkest by the way, I'll lead thee. From the fatness of the land, I will feed thee. And when life is over, a mansion in the sky, I'll deed thee. All high places, God said, I'll bring down. Put your hands together, honk your horns, give God glory. In Jesus' name. I was sharing with Brother Quran, our audio technician, that I grew up in San Francisco, California on the celebration of Juneteenth. Everybody on my mother's side of the family is from Texas. And for those of you who know the history, Texas was the last state to get word that enslaved Africans had been manumitted or set free in these yet to be United States of America. It was a great celebration and those who grew out of that tradition, who did not have the benefit of the Emancipation Proclamation, January 1st, 1863, celebrated and they carried the celebration to the southwestern part of America and certainly in California. So I'm glad that the rest of the nation has caught up with us. <laughs> I am glad that now this day has been enshrined as a federal holiday and deservedly so. And that's why the reading of this text today is so poignant from the New Revised Standard Version of God's Word. It is poignant not only for the celebration of Juneteenth, but for Father's Day. Now, in the King James Version, this story was sanitized a bit. The centurion's slave was called a servant. And we do think that there is a difference between such servitude and bondage that is placed upon a human being. And some might question Jesus because no one in this passage of scripture protested against the institution of human enslavement. The centurion was a Roman who was not only a sympathizer but a supporter of Jewish life, faith, and culture. We read in the text that he was so moved by Judaism that in Capernaum he built a synagogue so that the Jews might worship. And those of us who know anything about Jewish history, Jewish people spent 440 years enslaved themselves. But they never questioned the fact that this commanding officer, this centurion, this wealthy Roman had an enslaved person, at least one enslaved person in his household. We know that according to the text, this man valued this other human being. And we can only conjecture that he wasn't so hard hearted that once this person fell ill, that he was willing to kick him to the curb. 
Something obviously happened in the transaction, in the uh, interaction between this centurion and this man. And although he was labeled a slave, according to the New Revised Standard Version, he was much more than that. All right, say that. Say it. He was a child of God. Yeah. That's big. That's big. It's important in this world where people tend to, to devalue each other that we know who we are. Come on. Yeah. That's good advice right there. It's nice when people identify us properly, but if they misidentify us, if we know who we are, and if we know whose we are, yes. we can overcome, achieve, yes. overtake, and overthrow anything that would separate us from the love of God. I wish Jesus had gotten into the weeds. I, I wish that he had lectured the centurion. I wish that he had told this man, listen, uh, let's strike a deal. I'll heal him if you set him free. I don't know why Jesus didn't have that discussion. Maybe Jesus had a bigger picture in mind, something that you and I uh, did not catch in the text. Maybe his focus was on healing the man, getting him back on his feet so that he could have a future. So the centurion sends two delegations to Jesus. First, he sends the religious leaders to Jesus. And they appealed. They said, you know, this is a good guy. He's not against us, he's for us. He's on our team, he's on our side. As a matter of fact, he built our synagogue out of his own pocket. So we want you to consider him. We, we want you to consider his request. Now I can only imagine that uh, these Jewish leaders themselves were allies of Jesus. Otherwise, they would not have come to him. They would not have had this conversation. And based on their testimony, Jesus proceeded to the man's home. But then the centurion uh, started thinking again, and he said, you know what? He said, I know that people think highly of me, but, but I know that, that I'm not all of that. I, I know that I have some issues. I know that I have some problems. I, I, I know that, that I am not yet right completely with God. And Jesus should not even come to my home. Uh, my home is unworthy of his presence. I, I don't want him to defile himself. <laughs> But I know one thing, that wherever he is, if he just speaks the word, my slave will be healed. So he sends another group of people who say to Jesus, don't bother. The man doesn't even want you to come into his home. Not that he is, is ashamed of where he lives, but, but he knows that uh, you are holy and he is not. He knows that, that he still has uh, to make things right with God. And maybe even this uh, holding of another human being is a part of that process. He knows that the spirit of the Lord is upon you that you've been anointed to preach the good news to the poor, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to let the captive go free. Yes, sir. Yes. 
So, so he doesn't want you, he doesn't want to presume righteousness by you coming into his house. But from wherever you are, just say a word. Speak a word. He knows that this human being, his brother, will be made whole. Jesus thought about it and then said, you know, I haven't seen this kind of faith <laughs> in all of Israel. I hope that that's not the critique that Jesus has of us. But, but you and I need to fess up. We need to be honest. We don't always have a whole lot of faith, do we? Uh, we're, we're, we're close to Jesus, aren't we? Uh, those of us who are in this parking lot and, and in the virtual congregation, we name him, don't we? We identify with him, don't we? But, but we haven't been completely persuaded that he's everything that he says he is. And every now and then, it takes somebody from the outside. Somebody who is not in the inner sanctum or inner circle. Sometimes it takes somebody at a distance to help us understand how big God is. This centurion nailed it. He understood the performative power of God. And when the second group walked back to the house, something happened. We used to sing a song uh, it was entitled, Walk On by Faith Each Day. <laughs> on Monday, walk on. On Tuesday, walk on. Let Jesus be your guide. He's able to carry the load. He can see way down the road. Walk on by faith. Each day. The folks walked. And when they got back to the house, the man was healed. The man was, according to scripture, the man was in good health. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that, that Jesus has that kind of power. Anybody glad about it? Another hymn writer says he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing. There's something about the power of of the word of God. And there is something about the power of the words of God. There is something about the name Jesus. Anybody glad to know that name? I'm grateful that this centurion had the vision to realize who Jesus was. He didn't allow skepticism to stand in his way. He didn't allow doubt and fear to stand in his way. He didn't even allow the barrier of this man not being his flesh and blood, but his bond servant stand in the way. He wanted for this man, he wanted for this brother what he would have wanted for himself. And if I had to name somebody who deserves the Father of the Year Award, it would be this centurion. Because a, a real father not only looks out after flesh and blood, but a real father looks out after everybody. Somebody help me. A, a real father cares about everybody. A real father wants to see the community made whole. A real father wants to live in peace. A real father wants to share the love of God and the joy of God. A real father. And thank God a few of us have come to know some real fathers, haven't we? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
They got up early and they stayed late. They endured insult and injury. They brought home the proverbial bacon. They didn't always hug and they didn't always speak the words of love, but they demonstrated love. And they wanted the best for us. They were not perfect. Sometimes we would catch them arguing with our mothers. <laughs> Sometimes they were stubborn. Mother would be in the car telling my father what exit to take, but he knew so much. <laughs> he would drive 30 miles out of the way just to be right and was still wrong. But at the end of life's day, he was my daddy. Yes, sir. And I praise God for him. Yes. And if you've had a godly male influence in your life, whether in your home, whether in the classroom, whether in the workspace, whether in the church, you ought to honk your horn, you ought to praise God, you ought to give God glory. That, that some of us are maligned and I know that there is justification for it. Yes, sir. But every man is not a bad man. I wish I had a witness in here. Every man is not derelict. Every man is not missing in action. As a matter of fact, there are some men, and I'm saying this legitimately, they're taking care of several households. They're, they're making sure that all children are nurtured and cared for. And we ought to celebrate that today. And if we want to celebrate anything else, I have told you that God is bigger than gender, but we can take time today and celebrate the fatherhood of God. Yes, Somebody help me up in here. I trust in God where'er I may be, upon the land or on the stormy sea, though come what may from day to day, my heavenly father watches over me. I trust in God. Yeah. I know God cares for me. Upon the land or on the rolling sea, though billows roll, God keeps my soul. My heavenly Father. Anybody know about that? Oh, if you know, you need to praise God. You need to thank God. You need to bless God. Somebody give God glory for being there for us. Standing in the gap for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy God. And I'll say this and I'll be finished. I'm so glad that the God doesn't have to come down from heaven to see about you and me. Thank you, God. All God has to do is speak the word. Anybody glad about that? Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad when you call God by God's name, God hears and God helps and God rescues and God delivers. Somebody give God glory today. I heard somebody say one day that God is just a prayer away. Anybody believe that? We praise God for God's performative power. And we praise God for every outsider of the faith who shows us the face of God, the love of God. God is bigger than religion, I tell you. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Lionel Richie said it right. He said Jesus is love. <laughs> Do I have some help up in here? Thank you! Happy Father's Day. Abba, as the Apostle Paul said, Abba, Father, Daddy, Happy Father's Day. We praise you in Jesus' name. I want you to listen to this song, and then I will offer Christ and pray the prayer of faith. My heavenly Father watches over me. I trust in God. Where
We offer Christ now. We open the door of the church. If there is anyone in the lot, if there is anyone in our virtual congregation who wants to make Jesus their choice, we ask you to come forward right now. We ask you to indicate your commitment in the inbox and we'll be happy to get in contact with you. We thank and praise God for those who are walking towards their destiny in the parking lot. Somebody ought to give God praise. Somebody ought to give God the glory. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Isn't God great and greatly to be praised? Come on, we can do better than that. mighty God we serve. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for your performative power. There's power in your name. And we know, God, that if you just look in our direction, if you speak the word, we'll be made whole. We trust you. Oh, for grace to trust you more. Some of us have become too familiar with you, and we think that we can make it without you. We can't live without you. We can't walk without you. We can't see without you. We can't breathe without you. No, we, we can't make it without you. We thank you for your bigness. We thank you for your wideness, your vastness. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for moving in our direction. We, we thank you, God, for giving this congregation a new lease on life. We thank you, God, that on the 15th of June, around the one o'clock hour, you handed the deed to this property back to us. Free and clear. You did it. You did it. And we praise you for it. Now because you've done that, we know you can do everything else. And we trust you for everything else. We thank you for everything else. We thank you, God, that prayer does not have an expiration date. We thank you for the ancestors of this congregation who prayed for this day. They didn't see it in the natural, <laughs> but the day has come. We thank you, God, for our day of liberation, our day of emancipation. We thank you for taking us out of the wilderness where we have wandered far too long. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank you how you did it and when you did it and where you did it. You didn't have to wait until the stock market was booming. <laughs> you didn't have to wait until we were at peace in the world. You didn't wait until the pandemic turned into an endemic and then disappeared. You deliver in the midst of trouble and somebody ought to give you the glory. Nothing frightens you. Thank you, God. We ask you, God, to send healing virtue throughout this land. We're broken. We need to be healed. We're fractured. We need to be fixed. We've turned on each other. We need to turn to each other. We ask you, God, to let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with us. 
You have given us the solution to the supply chain issue. You've given us the solution to high prices of gas. You have even given us the solution to inflation. If we would just use what you have given us, there will be peace and prosperity and abundance over all the earth. And every enslaved person will be set free. <laughs> Thank you, God. We praise you. And we love you and we bless you. We thank you, God, for everybody celebrating a birthday in June. And especially on the 19th of June. Where Sister Frances Harden is celebrating another trip around the sun. Thank you, God, for her birthday today. We praise you. We give you glory. And we love you for it. We know birthdays have passed and we know that birthdays are coming. But we thank you for this day. Continue to abide with us. And we'll be satisfied. It is in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray and we say amen. amen. Praise God. And thank God. Put your hands together and give God love. Amen, amen. We thank God. We uh, had one sister uh, to join this fellowship last Sunday. And we've got others coming today. Put your horns together and your hands together and give God the praise. glad that God works on the outside and the inside. Anybody glad about that? Yes, yes God. Yes, God. We thank and praise God for our ministry of giving. And we thank God for the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous. We, we give not out of ceremony and we don't give out of custom. We give out of faith and relationship. We give one dime out of every dollar, those of us who are so persuaded, because we believe and trust God. We give our free will offerings likewise. And it is my prayer that we will give even more now than we've ever given before so that we can do the work that is before us. So we're going to ask the ministry leaders if they will circulate the baskets. Give and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but give up, give those things that are purposed in your heart where neither moth nor rust consume and where thieves do not break in and steal so that where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. As we collect the Lord's money, I, I want you to listen uh, to a narration by the sainted sister Edna Taylor. Praise God. When you enter life apart from God and his grace, that's isolation. When God comes to see you, that's visitation. When he unveils the mysteries of eternity, that's revelation. When you think of his marvelous goodness, that's a 
meditation. When you expect to see him, that's anticipation. When you feel his spirit moving in your heart, that's motivation. When you share in kingdom building, that's participation. When you tell of his goodness and his mercy, yes. that's recitation. When you glorify and praise him, that's celebration. And when all of these belong to your experience, you can't help but to shout. Oh, you may or may not do it the way others do it, but you'll do something. You'll open up. You will let go. You'll give vent to the spirit. You'll let the overflow flow. You may not jump up and down, but you'll shed a tear. You may not cry, but you'll pat a foot. You may not pat a foot, but you'll clap your hands. Something will happen. Something will move you. Something will touch you. And you'll feel something. So you can say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God that spoke to Mother's Earth and she dressed up in a green garment. He rolled this terrestrial ball into space it with a liquid mist, laid out the green carpet on the earth, tacked it down with daffodils, snapdragons, lilies, roses, and trees. He ordered a variety of blooming flowers and transfigured it into marvelous attraction. Praise God, the one that deferred the counsel of the Holy Trinity and organized an angelic host to furnish music while the glory of his father flooded the hills of Bethlehem, stepped on a heavenly made airplane, rolled down in a low ground of sorrow, leaped into the Virgin Mary, and was born one day in the city of David, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Praise God, who makes me walk like I'm rich, and I don't have to have a dime in the bank. Praise God sleep on a pillar of peace and a cushion of confidence. He opens doors that no man can shut. And if I'm running a little late, he'll hold them open until I get there. Praise God. He's our rock, our strength, our hope, our God, our peace, our life, our salvation.
we're going to have the report from the deacon's ministry after which we will have the offertory prayer. Calvary, this morning we have Don LeCou comes to us a Christian experience. is Evan Walker. He comes to us with a Christian experience. We thank God for these dear hearts that have been added to God's realm through the branch of Calvary. We will handle you with care and we pray that you will grow with us in Christian love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Deacon Kenneth Curry will now offer a prayer of thanksgiving for these gifts. Praise the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, that, what a wonderful dissertation that lady laid out singing uh, those praises. That's a big help to us. It's a wonderful day. We have so much to celebrate. Even when we don't think we have a lot to celebrate, we do. So happy Father's Day and happy Juneteenth. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you for this wonderful service and everyone under the sound of my voice, we hope that this has been a blessing to you. We hope that God will inspire you and anoint your life to be a better Christian in his sight. We thank you for everything that was done, every song that was sung, every praise that was lifted. We hope it was pleasing to you, God. So now, Lord, we pause to thank you for this offering that was given in your name to help build your kingdom here on earth. Bless the ones that gave and bless the ones that didn't have it. Maybe the next time they will. So we thank you for all your blessings, seen and unseen. It is in Jesus Christ and for name and for his sake we say amen and thank God. Amen. We pray that we will celebrate this day of liberation and thank God for the progress that we have made, knowing that we still have many miles to travel and promises to keep before we sleep. And we thank God for being with us every step of the way. Again, to everyone celebrating a birthday in June, happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you real good. Amen. Join us as we go deeper in God's Word Tuesday night, 7 o'clock U.S. Eastern Time on the conference call line and on our other platforms, Facebook Live, YouTube, Instagram. We thank and praise God for the upreach and outreach of our ministry. Join us Thursday night on the conference call line for our fellowship hour, 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. And then join us. Friday night at 7 o'clock p.m. U.S. Eastern Time for corporate prayer. We thank God for this wonderful ministry. And thank God that the best is yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen. As we come down from this high mountain of worship into the valley of service, I pray this prayer of anointing. Anointing? Fall on me, fall on you, fall on us, in Jesus' name.
call on me. Yes, God. Anointing. Fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Fall on me the power to say and do today. Send us from this place, never from your presence. We thank you, God, for our fathers. We thank you, God, for our father figures. We thank you for our mentors. We thank you for every positive male who has poured into our lives. And we pray, God, that you will stir up in all of us the spirit to love, to share, and to serve until every man fulfills his call and expresses his fullest potential in this life. We love you and we praise you and we thank you. Thank you for Juneteenth. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank God. Go in peace and serve the Lord with gladness. Amen.